Hello everyone, my name is Kamisha Brooks and today we will be looking at the Jean Watson theory of human caring. My group members are Dina K. Gabe, Sana K. Blair and Monique Christie. The Jean Watson theory was developed and named after Jean Watson. This theory is based on a moral, ethical and philosophical foundation of love and values. It approaches the patient using 10 guidelines for putting caring into practice. These guidelines are known as the curative factors. In order to get a better perspective of these factors, it is necessary to first understand the assumption of the Gene Watson theory. They are, caring can be effectively demonstrated and practiced interpersonally. Caring involves factors that result in the satisfaction of human needs. Effective caring promotes health and individual family growth. Caring responses accept the person as they are now and as what they may become. A caring environment is one that offers the development of potential. Caring is more autogenic than it is caring. Last but not least, the practice of caring is central to nursing. 38-year-old Alison Peters was at home with her family when she noticed a persistent cough, pain and burning during drinking or eating hot or cold foods and a lump in her neck. Worried about her singing career, she rushed to the St. Joseph's Public Hospital where she was admitted. <sighs> Hello. Good day, nurse. Oh, God. Okay, um, good day, Miss. Um, your name, please? My name is Alice, Alice, Miss Alison Peter. Okay. Alice, you seem to be an adult of cancer. Yes, nurse. How about two weeks now, nurse? I feel the pain on my neck. Alright, let's um so I'm going to ask you just to rate the pain for me. Um on a scale of one to ten. Ten being the worst pain you've ever felt. What are you feeling right now? First me I feel a ten and a half Okay. Well what I'm going to go ahead and do is just to check your um the doctor's order and see if we can find some um pain relief for you, alright? Yes. Are you sure? Was that everything? Um, did you? Excuse me. 
Was that everything? No, no. Oh, oh, oh nurse. Yes? Nurse. Yes? Nurse. diagnosis that um, the doctors have decided upon is actually a throat cancer. Please, we have say, we throat cancer. Yes. Um, no, 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 Miss Peters, Miss Peters is not the end of the world. People survive cancer. No. And the good news is that um, it's most likely that we caught this one at an early stage. I think so. Yeah, man. Come on, you don't have to look at it at um, some things about the lifestyle that you live may change. But it can get better and it is a manageable condition. What's the consequence of And I don't want to take a pill today. Well, what you can do now that you know that you have cancer oh is God. put some um, plan in place. Okay. Right? So, I don't stop being on us. I told you we have cancer nurse and I was 21. Well, I'm not tripping if I got me. It's been three different men. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do it. Miss Peter? Nobody knows one time. I'm not going to walk this man. Miss Peter. Miss Peter. Come. Look at me, Miss Peter. Right? Yeah. So you've been doing this by yourself for how long? Since 6 years. Right. So you're a woman who knows how to work with things. Right? Yes. And to make it used, um, you know, find some way to make it work with your family. For your family, yes? So this is just another obstacle. This is just something else that will make you stronger as a family. So when you can, of course, when you can inform your family. It depends on the type of treatment. It depends on the stage of cancer. Okay, but miss, I'm a I don't believe in the cut. So we can't get no cut. Miss Peters, first, let us get all the information. Okay. And then we can look into treatment options, all right? Okay. Wait for the rest of your results and we'll take it from there. But let me go and get you some pain medication, oh, all right? Okay. Thank you very much. Right. You're so nice, nurse. Thank you very much. Look at that, me, why me, what at that, me. Miss Peters. Oh, God. Miss Peters. Yes. Hello. Good afternoon. Oh, you want? I'm here to give you your pain medication. No, when, when, when Nurse Christie did, you know why you're weak. Nurse Christie had to leave, her shift has ended. Oh, I'm fine, medication. I don't, I don't want it. It's both tiring for your pain. No, I don't want it. You need it. Don't you want to get rid of the pain? Oh, okay. Yes. No, I'm going to feel better. Yes, it will make you feel much better. Let me just check your wristband. Suggest the surgeon. Oh, but well, me here said he came over to go to here. Right, that's and why we would suggest the surgery because you would just you know, attack the problem without know, having to affect any, anything else. I know I'm the rest of it. I have two more people, you know, I six kids more. Right, right. Uh, three, three. I mean, I'm three already. 
That is that is nice. You should recre you should reproduce. Yes, thanks. Sir. Yes. Right. Now, if you if you do choose to do the surgery, yes. there are certain things that you are going to have to do. Like what? Such as you have to change your communication method, so you know after the surgery you won't be able to communicate via your mouth as much. But but, so, but me not understand you, so me not understand the same thing with me saying it or me not understand. I understand. I do understand. But for your surgery, for your surgery, you have to get at least six months of rest so that your throat can heal properly. But who could so take care of it the nurse? You don't have any other family member. Oh, nurse, they found a and they found a workless nurse, a three different man. It's not a three workless man nurse. Me you know, don't have lucky till me can buy lucky. <laughs> What your grandmother or your mother or your father? You know, me don't know. Me have me have to ask her. Are there or, ask or, or your, their aunts or uncles? Me don't know. Me don't know none of boy them family. Me don't know nobody. Just my family alone. Nurse. Well, you should go ahead and ask them for assistance. I'm sure they would love to assist you at I, this time. I, I, me don't want to let them pick them nurse. So I don't want to leave them alone. Right. So you have to ensure that you do everything you can. So you stay alive for your children. That's nervous, though. Right. And along with your communication, you know there are certain foods that you won't be able to eat for a while. Like like what? You'd have to stay on soft. So you'd have to stay on liquid food. Like for porridge. The first, well, like milk or supplement or insulin. Me, me like porridge, you know. For the first couple of months until you can gradually move into your soft food. Right. Like your mashed potatoes and your porridge and so on. Okay. Okay. So you, you, you see that there is hope and you'll be able to make it through this. Okay. Okay? Okay. So you can go ahead and have some rest. Okay. And we'll be back to see you in a bit, alright? Thank you very much. Miss Peters? Miss Peters? Yes, yes, nurse. Yes. Nurse Brooks here. Nurse Brooks here. Yes, Nurse Brooks. So I brought <coughs> some flowers for you. Smell so it, smell it. That's nice. And let me open the window for you so also. Nice. We need to allow some fresh air to come in. It's so nice. Right. Thank you very much. You are know, nice so untidy, nice. unkept. Not because they're in the hospital, you know. We still need to look pretty and kept. You understand? Yes, nurse. Thank you very much. The right. nurse at this hospital is so nice. Take care of me. Right. I was going through your bedside table and I saw your Bible there. Yes, nurse. I'm Jehovah's Witness. Right. So I just wanted to, just thought that I should share a scripture with you. Yes, nurse. Psalms 23. You know it, right? Yes, nurse. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He needed me beside the still waters. It also Amen. says, Yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil, for thou art with you. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort you. Thank you very much, nurse. You hear that? Yes. Jehovah is always here with you. Yes, so while you're going through your trying time, remember that Jehovah is here. Right. And you know, when I'm not here, um, the other nurses may not find time to do to read a scripture to you to comfort you, but the chaplain is around, so you can request ask the nurse to call the chaplain for you. You know, as a matter of fact, let me pray for you. Thank you very much, nurse. Oh, that will be with you and provide some comfort for you. Thank you very much, nurse. Oh, my God. Amen. Amen. Amen, nurse. Thank you very Have much. Have a great day, nurse. You too, nurse. Very nice. God bless you. Let's talk a little bit more about the video that you just saw. We just incorporated in that little role play the 10 curative factors. The first of which was um, practicing loving kindness and equanimity within the context of the care and consciousness. Well this, um, to do this, or 
to embrace this particular curative factor. What this would mean is um, demonstrating respect for oneself and others, treating others with kindness, as well as you know um, paying attention to others. That would lead us to our second curative factor, being authentically present and enabling and sustaining the deep belief system of self and one of being cared for. Okay, so this means um, you know providing the person with a sense of hope, helping others to believe in themselves, and of course encouraging their ability to go on in life. The third is of course to cultivate one's own spiritual practice and transpersonal self, going beyond self ego, form a more full consciousness of heart centeredness, which is opening all the chakras. Now this is the practice of self-reflection. Whether, uh, now this would be personal, so it could be journaling, prayer, meditation, or artistic um, you know, expression. So um, the value of intrinsic goodness in one's self and others as a human being is expressed here. For the fourth factor, which is developing and sustaining and helping trusting authentic caring relationship. Now this enters into experience to explore the possibilities in the moment um, and in the relationship. So you hold others with unconditional love and regard, hold a sacred space for healing and providing others with the time they need, you know, with a non-judgmental attitude. The fifth, being present to and supportive of expression of positive and negative feelings as a connection with deeper spirit of self and of being centered. Let me say that again. Being present to and supportive of the expression of positive and negative feelings as a connection with deeper spirit of self and the one being cared for. Once again, this involves a sacred space for um, an acknowledging an inner healing journey. So you would give uh, the, uh, you would allow for the uncertainties that are known. Within the scenario, the um, person being cared for, Miss Peters, she was, she felt uncertainty as it pertains to the care of her children going forward as well as her career. So you encourage storytelling, allowing the person to emerge, change and grow beyond that particular experience. Number six, creativity, using self and all ways of knowing as a part of caring, as a part of the caring process, engaging in artistry of caring, healing practice. All right. So this integrates aesthetics, ethics, empirical, personal, and metaphysical ways of knowing with creativity. So of course you provide information and you integrate this. So um, you know, providing the client with support, knowledge as it pertains to her particular condition, as well as you can't do that. Encouraging others to ask questions, <laughs> and of course um, the seventh, engaging in genuine teaching, learning experiences, and attend. To unity of being and meaning. So active listening with one's whole being, giving the person your undivided attention, being calm, quiet, respectful to each other, and you know, seeking first to learn from each other, share, and then come up with um, empathical scenarios for the care of the client. Cre this eighth, creating a healing environment at all levels. So this is a space for um, you know human connection. You would take into consideration their immediate environment. Miss Peters would admit it to the ward, so you would um, ensure that she has her ear is cleaned. Therefore, Miss Peters, we made you know gave her an open window. You know, fresh flowers were provided, as well as you know combing her hair, providing comfort measures for her within that space where she was unfamiliar. The ninth. With um, curative factor, which is reverently and respectfully assisting with the basic needs. So, of course, 
we are going to look, we looked at Miss Peters as um, in a holistic manner. So we respected her individual needs, made her as comfortable as possible, and helped others to, to worry less, help her to worry less in response to her family's needs, her needs um, as well. And lastly, this was the tenth curative factor is opening and attending to spiritual mysterious and unknown existential dimensions of one owns life. All right, start over. Go on now. All right. So, and the tenth, opening and attending to spiritual mysterious and unknown existential existential dimensions of one's own life, death, suffering soul care of self and one's being cared for which is basically allowing for a miracle so you nurture the clients you support hope and you allow for the unknown to unfold so um accept that some life happenings are inexplicable we can't explain them but we do have to accept them so in respect to those um things that have meaning for that particular client as well as your colleagues I do hope that um, enlightened you as to the 10 curative factors of um, Jean Watson. Once again, um, do enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for watching. Before starting our presentation on pain, it is suitable that we explain what pain is, the types of pain, the assessment of pain, the factors influencing pain, and the nursing management in regards to pain. Firstly, pain is an unpleasant and highly personal experience that may be imperceptible to others while consuming all parts of the person's life. According to Margot McCaffrey, pain is whatever the person says it is and exists whenever he says it does. This definition certainly portrays all subjective pain. Pain may be described in terms of location, duration, intensity, and etiology. The first type of pain is referred pain. It appears to arise in different areas to other parts of the body. For example, cardiac pain may be felt in the shoulder or left arm with or without chest pain. The second type of pain is visceral pain. This pain arising from organs or all of viscera. It is often perceived in an area remote from the organ, causing the pain. The third type of pain is acute pain. Based, this is based on the duration of the pain, whether it has a sudden or slow onset, regardless of its intensity. Fourthly, there is chronic pain. This is also, there is also moderate pain with a rating of 4 to 6 and severe pain with a range of 7 to 10. Pain may also be classified based on its etiology. The first one is nociceptive pain. Pain is experienced when an intact, properly functioning nervous system sends signals that tissues are damaged requiring attention and proper care for example the pain experienced following a cut or broken bone alerts the person to avoid further damage until it is properly healed the second type of pain classified under etiology is somatic pain this originates in the skin, muscles, bone, or connective tissue. The sharp sensation of a paper cutting or aching of a spring, sprained ankle are common examples of somatic pain. Thirdly, neuropathic pain. It is associated with damage or malfunctioning nerves due to illness. Example, post herpetic neuralgia, diabetic peripheral neuropathy injury. Now moving on to the physical assessment of pain. Upon inspection, you need to observe the posture. 
The client appears to be slumped with the shoulders not straight. This indicates being disturbed or uncomfortable. Client is inattentive and agitated. The client might be guarding affect the affected area and have breathing patterns reflecting distress. Also, you may need to observe the facial expression. The client's ex facial expression indicates distress and discomfort, including frowning, moans, cries, and grimacing. Eye contact is not maintained, indicating discomfort. You inspect joints and muscles. Edema of a joint may indicate injury, and pain may result in muscle tension. You also need to observe the skin for scars, lesions, rashes, changes or discoloration. Because bruising, wounds or edema may be the result of injuries or infection. Factors influencing pain. Numerous factors can affect a person's perception of and reaction to pain. Berman and Snyder, 2012. These factors are ethnic and cultural values. Individuals in one culture may learn to be expressive about pain, while others in a different culture may learn to keep those feelings to themselves. Developmental stage. Age is an important variable that will influence both the reaction to and the expression of pain. Environment and people support. A strange environment such as a hospital with its noises and lights can compound pain. A lonely person who is without a support network may perceive pain as severe, whereas the person who has support from other people may perceive less pain. Previous pain experience. People who have personally experienced pain or who have experienced someone else's suffering from pain are often more threatened by anticipated pain than persons without such experiences. Meaning of pain. Some clients may accept pain more readily than others, depending on the circumstances and their interpretation of its significance. A person who associates the pain with a positive outcome may withstand the pain very well. Key strategies to reduce pain. Key strategies to reduce pain include acknowledging and accepting the client's pain, assisting support persons, reducing misconceptions about pain, reducing fear and anxiety, and preventing pain.